Hello YouTube, hello BitChute. I hope this video finds you all well. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for subscribing. On YouTube, we're almost up to 500 subscribers, which is great. On BitChute, we still got a way to go. <laughs> uh, just a quick update. Uh, I've been working on building Buddhist.cafe and we're creating a new site there, a custom site. So the current site is not going to be getting any more updates uh, anymore. And I've put a link in the profile to join the test site. Uh, so we're going to be restructuring everything um, and we're going to be gearing everything towards a more uh, user-friendly experience. Um, so I encourage you to join Buddhist.cafe um, and then join the test site, okay, if you're interested in getting uh, involved in a community. Now, I've also been working on a different project called uh, Buddhist for Truth, which the channel uh, is on BitChute, and we have a website for that as well. Uh, you can find that uh, on, on BitChute. It's called Buddhist for Truth, uh, where we have a roundtable style of uh, interviews and uh, conversations and discussions. Uh, and we also are now doing uh, a live stream every uh, Wednesday, every Wednesday Thai time at 9am if you want to join. Uh, on Buddhist Cafe also we're, we're having regular meetings every the first Sunday of every month at around 9am Thai time. Uh, so if you want to join that uh, you can do that. We've got a uh, a conference, um, a conference capability now on Buddhist.cafe um, where we have regular meetings and members can use the conference system um, for themselves too. Uh, it has a recording feature, it has a chat feature and it has a, uh, damn it, go away, <laughs> and a chat feature and uh, a whiteboard feature, a share screen feature, so it's pretty good. So I've been working on on this for the last uh, two years and this last month we've been putting in a bit more work and I've also as you know in my previous videos I'm staying at a hermitage on my own uh, it's about 40 acres and uh, this takes a lot of my time uh, maintaining it keeping it clean you see this you see that bug it won't go away come on go away uh, yeah this this uh Hermitage, private hermitage that I'm on requires a lot of uh, uh, labor, a lot of uh, cleaning, a lot of maintenance, um, daily activity here, as well as keeping up my practice. <clears throat> so the videos have been neglected uh, somewhat, and I'm trying to build up uh, a site where I can just upload videos there and have other people upload videos there as well and create our own kind of community which I've always been which I've been trying to do for, for a long time so I hope that uh, I hope that makes sense so uh, I hope you um, I hope you uh, join our community and I hope that uh, this update uh, kind of settles why the videos have not been uh, have not been regular here on YouTube nor BitChute uh, on my personal channel One big question I get uh, from people who contact me um, online um, through Buddhist.cafe is uh, dealing with, particularly from lay people, mainly from lay people, is right now uh, inflation is very high, costs are very high, there's a lot of calamity in this world, uh, there's talk of war on a grand scale, a lot of our countries are getting involved. Uh, there's talk about nuclear possibility. Uh, there's talks. There's, things are going a little bit haywire and have been for the last few years. And so I think it's important to stress the the need to to have, I guess, internal direction and conviction 
not only in the Lord Buddha, but the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, and this is very important, and I'll discuss why this is very important. You see, uh, regardless of what happens out there, <clears throat> and what happens in the world, and what our, uh, our I guess, our karmic, uh, karmic and uh, our karmic, uh, our karmic, uh, I guess, requisite is in terms of what's coming to us now and in the future from the past, from past lives, etc. There's no point really worrying about, especially about uh, <clears throat> actions in the past and things like this. Uh, the important thing is in, uh, uh, in the practice is to strive to do well now, to bring your focus and attention uh, to doing what's right right now and and I've talked about this and you know you can go to any Buddhist channel and I'll probably repeat the same words because this is a stock standard answer uh, practicing morals practicing uh, <clears throat> everything in the correct way now again we must understand right we, we have to start somewhere like even myself before I became a monk I believed in a lot of things and did a lot of things and uh, I strayed in many ways and strayed I say strayed because now I feel that I've got some kind of correct direction not some kind but I feel I sense that <clears throat> uh, it's been a while now I can I can look at the results and I feel that uh, and it, I feel much better where I am not it, where I am mentally these days <laughs> But it's inevitable because I did not start as a Buddhist. I was born up. Uh, I was born into a Catholic atheist family. My father was atheist. And my mother was uh, Catholic. So it's very funny because on my father's side, uh, they're staunch atheists, and on my mother's side, uh, they're, they're you know they're Catholic and uh, church-going people in general. Not all, but in general, uh, they are religious. So. I started off there and then eventually as I uh, grew up and tried different uh, philosophies and studied different uh, schools of thought, uh, made different discoveries in different areas and tried different things, yeah, I did, you know, I skirted the, uh, the, the borders of morality and uh, perhaps uh, jumped into the fire many times, which I don't do anymore, right? So, you know, if I think about that, all the time, then I, it'll, it'll take away my attention from what I'm doing now. And so this is the thing. Focus or sati is very important to centralize your focus on what you're doing now and steering that in the right direction regardless of what the past, um, what has been done in the past, right? And so the important thing, the good news is, is that you can, if you put your f complete focus and you centralize yourself now, in the moment and you direct your mind to skillful qualities uh, all the time uh, with diligence with discipline and that takes time to develop as well uh, you'll find that things will get you'll build, start building that muscle you'll start building a sense of strength that way right and then it starts to build and get stronger and stronger and stronger as, as you climb towards as you walk towards the Noble Eightfold Path, cultivate, cultivating and developing the eight factors. And this is an important thing, cultivation and development. So we're cultivating, like planting seeds, and we're developing those seeds, right? So it's it, every moment it's about, uh, I guess, building up knowledge, building up wisdom, building up strength, building up conviction, building discipline, building diligence, working on virtues, uh, improving working on generosity for example in the lay world generosity is very important in the world generosity is very important is, is, is crucial what we're seeing in the world these days is a lack of it right so but however there are people in the world that are practicing correctly um, there are strong lay communities and uh, strong monks good monks practicing well and you can tell when you're in that environment you can tell that there is a there is a uh, a good direction 
a good atmosphere, a good environment. And it's a good environment to be in. So what the aim of the game is, is to create a good environment in your mind. And, a, and, and through that, you create a good environment where you live and in your community. And it's important not to blame people or look for blame. Now, we talk about blame and we talk about other doctrines. Unfortunately, it's, it, they exist. So it's not... You know, don't misunderstand me when I say things like Talmud, Marxism, uh, evil, evil, evil actions, evil doctrines, right? Things like this. Or I talk about uh, uh, deception. Deception. Uh, for example, there are doctrines that say it's okay uh, to lie and steal from uh, people that are not following our doctrine. And there are doctrines like this, right? Or philosophies or schools of thought. And they're, and they're out there, right? Or there are doctrines that believe in sacrificing animals on a certain, uh, on a given, you know, for a given period, you know, uh, is is beneficial and an offering to heaven or something. But in Buddhism, we don't do these things. And the Buddha also condemned these actions and said they were nonsense, right? And we also must also remember, uh, and I think the pertinent point of this video anyway, is what Buddha did, like, was a serious was a serious commitment, a serious action. If we consider that Lord Buddha was, <clears throat> before he be, was Lord Buddha, he was Gautama the Prince, right? And he left behind a wife and a child, right? The child was only seven days old, according to the text, according to my memory, right? So, can you imagine what it took? For the Buddha to leave behind a lavish life, you know, a beautiful wife, a child, um, a father who was who was also a king, you know, um, a mother who was a queen, you know, three palaces. He walked away from that and walked to and walked into rags, right, to eating once a day kind of thing, to to staying to sleeping under trees and not eating and things like this. This was a serious, a very serious and staunch move on Gautama's part at the time because he was searching knowledge and happiness, real happiness, real wisdom, because he found that his life was not leading in that direction. So he was very serious, right? And then when, of course, when he uh, realized Nibbana, when he realized the, truth, the Four Noble Truths, he did not revert back into the, the lifestyle that he came from. He kept going forward and then, uh, and then established the, the Sangha, right? Now, when he established the Sangha, the Sangha were a staunch group of practitioners as well, and many Sangha members left their families and left their old religions behind, okay? They left their old schools of thought and schools of doctrine behind. So many... Many of the the first uh, the first line of disciples of the Buddha all had a past, and the Buddha himself had a past, right? So we don't think about that anymore. In Buddhism, it's not important. In, in Buddhism, um, and 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 using this example of the Lord Buddha is if you if you reflect on the Buddha and you reflect on how serious and how staunch he was when he committed himself to going forth to cutting his hair uh, to living a very difficult life and uh, committing himself to practice every day right I guess that's Buddhism in itself right because we got I think uh, you know the world's a big place and there's lots of schools of thought and there's lots of views out there but I guess there's also a kind of view out there that Buddhism is just lax and it's easy going and it's just all lovey-dovey and kumbaya and chubby-chubby this and um, <clears throat> that, <laughs> right? But really, no, it's a staunch practice. Um, if you look at cultivating and developing uh, in a physical sense like uh, you know, growing rice or plant or being a farmer, there's nothing easy going about it. It's hard work. Many hours in the sun... Uh, it requires a lot of physical strength, a lot of physical uh, discipline. Uh, you have to put up with a lot of uh, uh, mosquitoes and insects and uh, other animals and, and, and there's danger and um, the crops can fail. 
you know, things like this. It's, it's not an easy life, right? So Buddhism requires that kind of staunch, that staunch conviction, that, that, that kind of like uh, you need to step out of yourself, shut the back door, and really get into this practice to see the results. So I think that for this, for this discussion anyway, I think uh, regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of our position and what we can do, we can only do what we can do. But it's what we don't do. It's what we don't do that's important. And that's one big thing that people miss, especially about monks and about the rules. It's about what we refrain from that helps. Like when we refrain from killing living beings, when we refrain from stealing or, or refrain from uh, we, we don't take what is, not, what, what is not given, right? We refrain from any sexual activity or as monks, in the case of lay people, we, we refrain from sexual misconduct. We refrain from, we refrain from false speech, for example, right? We refrain from false speech. Uh, we, we refrain from negative behavior. We refrain from harsh speech. We refrain from um, doing harm to ourselves and others. Now that is a big move forward for humanity, right? Just those five things, let alone all the things the monks have to refrain from, right? We have to refrain from anything. We can't even rip a leaf off a tree. Uh, this is Theravada in Mahayana. They can. They can. It's a different rule system. But the thing is, is that what you refrain from doing is helps the world a lot. It helps the world. So if you make an oath, if you make a, not an oath, sorry, if you uh, follow the precept, for example, of not killing living, refraining from killing living beings, refraining from stealing anything that is not given, right? Or taking what is, you do not take what is not given, right? That's a lot already. Or you refrain from false speech or harsh speech. In other words, you don't lie to anybody and you're, you're not insulting anybody or offending on anybody, at least intentionally, right? That does a lot. That, that is the peace train, as Cat Stevens would say, or his new name, I think, is Yusuf. He, he wrote a song a long time ago and I used to listen to it as a child. It's called The Peace Train. Get on the peace train, right? Work towards peace, all right? We have to ourselves have to work towards peace. And that requires moral foundation as well as cultivating and develop virtue. Now, virtue is essential and it's difficult to uh, cultivate and develop, particularly the, the virtue of dana or generosity, right? Or the, the virtue of uh, determination, the virtue of equanimity, the virtue of metta or goodwill. <clears throat> they're, they're, they're a ten parami, right? Um, and they're divided into three areas, so there's, there's actually 30, right? There's 10, but there's 30, right? There's three sub, there's three kinds of one certain uh, parami. So, for example, dana parami or generosity parami, giving parami, giving parami meaning uh, perfections, right? There's different, there's three different areas of that uh, practice, right? And they're hard to do. It's hard to be generous when you have little. Um, it's hard to be generous when you have a lot for a lot of people as well. People, So these practices, they're to be cultivated and developed. So what we do is we drop the fact that where we've been, what we've done, it's irrelevant. It's what we do now that's essential. It's essential. And it's also what we don't do, okay, the art of non-action, the practice of non-action, right, which can't be stressed enough. The practice of non-action, right, is, is also a thing in itself, a practice in itself, where we refrain, where we refuse to do anything immoral, where we refuse to do anything that's not correct, or we refuse to do anything that's harmful to, your, to ourselves or others. Now, this is important. This is important. And by, uh, by participating in this practice, you are helping yourself and you're helping everybody around you, even though there may not be any recognition. Right? For example, the, the, the life of solitude as a monk is one of the most peaceful lives there can be. And people think it's selfish. It's actually not selfish because when we refrain from killing, we refrain from stealing, we refrain from uh, speaking things that are not correct, 
we refrain from bad behaviour, we refrain from any harm whatsoever, how is that selfish? It's beneficial for ourselves and everybody around us. And that's one thing I think uh, that needs to be stressed a little bit more these days is uh, it's what you don't do, it's what you refrain from that's important, just as much as what you do do. So what you do do, you try to do in communion with the uh, Four Noble Truths, with the Noble Eightfold Path. That's what you do do. What you don't do and what you refrain from is any evil action, any evil verbal action, any evil mental action, any evil physical action.